Well, I uh, <clears throat> told you guys I'd be back this evening and uh, bring you some more information on um, CPS and the abduction of children, the human trafficking, executive order violations, <clears throat> as well as uh, the cooperative agreements that the federal government has entered into the state and the cooperative agreements between the state and the counties and municipalities and the sheriff's department all to unjustly enrich themselves and um, gain monetary gain, if you will, uh, by participating in destroying families under the guise that it's for, uh, for the best interest of the offspring or the family. And so what I wanted to do is bring to you what I've been working on for the last, well, day and a half. <clears throat> and... Um, wanted to make sure you guys had a face to a name. I don't hide behind uh, false names or false and fictitious entities or anything like that. I am who I am. And uh, you're always going to get information direct from me. If you don't know much about me, I have no qualms going into the court, just like I have no qualms walking into a dark alley with, uh, uh, with a fistful of quarters and a bunch of guys that are wanting to get rowdy, okay? Same thing applies. You just have to have that fuck you, here's to me attitude doesn't mean that you have to be a dickhead all the time, but there are times where you have to grab your sack of nuts and stand up and sound off like you got a fucking pair, all right? And when it comes to offspring of this nation, furthermore the world, every man should feel this way. And it is time, it has been a long time coming, for all of us to stand up. You know, something that was unique about the truckers in Canada, they all blocked the roads off, and that's great. But none of them had any documentation saying, you fuckers are going to answer these documentation, these inquiries, word for word for word, and tell us whether or not you're a legitimate form of government. They're already exhibiting through their actions that they're not. Uh, so actions speak louder than words. But to have documents in place, if you're going to shut down the roads, let's get some paper in their hands and make them answer before we clear the roads, right? Let's actually get these people to expose who they are or correct their fucking behavior. Pretty simple. So... That's my goal in all of this, is to help uh, bring families back together, to help bring kids back home where they belong, offspring, children, whatever the hell you want to call them. Uh, if you want to play the word game with me, that's all fine and dandy, but, you know, equity looks at the intent and disregards the form. I think you guys all know where my heart is and what I'm talking about. I am going to hold a class on this. It's going to be a $100 donation to join the class. You will have access to the documents. I am not going to read through the entirety of this document. I'm not even finished with it yet. And it is already like uh, 10 or 15 pages long. By the time I'm done, it'll probably be closer to 30 pages, all right? Um, so I'm going to just give you guys a briefing on this. It pertains to Title 4D, Title 4E, the cooperative agreements between the state, uh, the federal government, the treasury, the uh, um, commissioners, you name it. Everybody that's getting paid by the state's involved. They're involved with the, the highest levels of the federal government. The legislators are the ones that created this along with the Bar Association to manifest a war between families here in the United States, all right? So here we go. I'm just going to give you a briefing uh, of what I'm doing here on this end, and I will be putting this into a class. So give me just one second. Flip this around. All right, so it's a notice of intent to file a claim against your surety bond. Okay, we're going to give them notice of uh, of our intent because the Indiana statute uh, requires it. Now, I know what everybody's saying. Why do you use statutes, codes, city ordinances, rules and regulations, blah, blah, blah. None of that applies to us. You're right. It doesn't apply to us. But who does it apply to? Who He who creates the bullshit is bound by it. So that's your legislators, your politicians, your governors, your attorney generals. All of them are bound by it, all right? If they create it, they get to waller in their own fucking mess. You piss the bed, you're probably going to sleep in it if you ain't intelligent enough to flip the bed over, all right? It's your mess, uh, and that's the euphemism behind it all, all right? It's your mess, you lie in it, you waller in it. I didn't help you create it, I didn't help you dig the hole, you fill the hole back up. So, that's what this notice of intent is, is that uh, they're in breach of trust, they've taken an oath of office to the state constitution, as well as the... Uh, uh, United States Constitution, they're in breach of trust. We are the heirs and beneficiaries of this manifested trust in, in existence under uh, uh, Amjuris Prudence, uh, excuse me, yeah, Amjuris Prudence 2D 63C. All public officials are, in fact, trustees of the American people. If you need further evidence and proof of that, 
uh, just start studying trust law and go back to 1871, the Reconstruction Act, and start to look uh, and compare your studies with trust to what they actually did, all right? So uh, this is a notice of intent to uh, make a claim against the surety bond. Um, this guy is a commissioner, okay? And the commissioners in each county uh, agree on this. They vote on this, okay? They all sit down and they say, hey, uh, 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 the Title IV-D program has come up for discussion again. We have to renew our contract with them this year. All in favor? Aye. And everybody goes, aye, because they're all getting their, their, their pockets lined with this shit, all right? All uh, not in favor, nay. And the room is quiet. You could hear a fucking field mouse fart in there because nobody's going to fuck with the, five, the tens of millions of dollars that they're getting in incentive payments and, and uh, grant money from the federal government. Nobody's going to do that. You have to understand these municipalities, these counties are corporations. They are doing business, okay? And they carry a great active degree of fault for breach of trust and, and violating people's rights under the color of law, okay? So, this notice will go to uh, Mr. Mike Burton, along with his uh, uh, three other constituents, and uh, it'll also go to the auditor, the, um, this notice will also go to the governor, the attorney general, the secretary of state, the sheriff in the local uh, county, and you'll see why here in a minute, but for now, that's the information that's up there. Each one of them will have their name addressed on this. We, uh, the law acts specifically, and under the Real ID Act, you want to do your best to find their full, true legal name. All right? And uh, we're going to be doing this for purposes of holding them accountable, but maybe not, possibly not, having to take them into a court and actually sue them. We're talking about making it. It's kind of like a, a car crash collision. The two insurance companies, you exchange insurance information. Do you ever go to court for that? No, you don't. Do you ever get called and bothered for it? Unless you went to the hospital due to the injuries you sustained uh, from the accident? No, you don't get bothered, all right? The two insurance companies hash it out. So that's essentially what will happen here. If you form this correctly, properly, and you're real straight up about it, what ends up happening is the insurance will conduct an investigation on their own, sua sponte, to see how much liability they carry. And if this was to go to court, they calculate the probability of them prevailing, okay? And the probability in this is zero. Ladies and gentlemen, when you see what I've been working on, you will quickly understand they don't have a fucking pot to piss in. You make a claim against their bond at, at this level, to this magnitude, with this incriminating evidence out of their own manuals, ladies and gentlemen. This comes out of the CFR, the USC, the, the uh, OCSE, uh, Child, uh, Child Protective Services Division, DHHS. All this information is right out of their own handbooks and federal manuals, ladies and gentlemen. This isn't stuff that was cooked up by me. This is all verified and published by them, all right? It's almost like... They created a, a, a road to chaos and yet gave you every fucking remedy you could ever ask for in their manuals. They publish literally what they're doing. They call it a scheme. Uh, um, they, they talk about um, who created all the provisions. They even call them provisions. They're not laws. All right. So it's really about ascending of the mind. And getting to this, let's jump into it again. I'm going to hold a class on this. It'll be about three weeks out. Uh, I'll post on my Facebook wall what date we're going to shoot for. Uh, as always, it'll be a weekend class on a Saturday or a Sunday. Um, but uh, make sure to share this video around and, and really get it out there for the people that are struggling with these abusive uh, uh, people acting under the color of authority, under the color of law, forcing their will upon you to unjustly enrich themselves and their families by participating in human trafficking and the deprivation of rights under the color of law, okay? So here we go. Notice to agent is notice to principal. Notice to principal is notice to agent. It has come to my attention the egregious deception uh, uh, perpetrated against the American people by the state government, federal government, county government, and bar association, whereas the legislator have implemented provisions for which are voluntary, otherwise, legally speaking, would be unconstitutional. The problem I have found is that due process is clearly being violated. All uh, as well as uh, oaths of office 
for the benefit of the state treasury for federal funding and federal grant monies rendering all cooperative agreements with the federal government, state government, county government, and local municipalities pertaining uh, for Title IV E forward slash Title IV E. So Title IV D and Title IV E. For those of you that don't understand what Title IV E is, it's the compensation program for uh, for adoptions. Okay. So if they're not getting you on the Title IV D side on child support, they're uh, attempting to remove your offspring from your house through the Title IV E incentivized payments for adoption. Federal funding and grants, a RICO violation, civil rights violation, breach of trust, executive order violation 13818 and 13903, human trafficking violation, trafficking of children violation, violation of Title 18, subsection 241 and 242, violation of ICCPR, International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights 1 through 27, violation of the State of Indiana Constitution and violation of the United States Constitution, whereas state violation, violation of your oath of office, you have sworn an oath to uphold the Constitution for the state of Indiana and the Constitution for the United States of America. You have failed to uphold both of these constitutions. Let us take uh, notice of oath of office, the Indiana uh, Constitution, Article 15, Section 4, and state law require all officers to take a, and prescribe take a prescribed oath prior to assuming their duties. Any official who has the power and uh, who has the power to administer oath, <clears throat> oaths may administer the oath. In practice, although it is not a requirement, most county level officials give their oath before either the county clerk or a judge. One of the uh, county level courts, judge of one of the uh, county level courts, the officer swears or attests to the oath on the officer's commission or certificate of election. Oaths are filed with the county clerk. For county commissioners, assessors, and council members, failure to deposit a copy of the oath uh, may result in a vac uh, in vacating the office. I see that's uh, Indiana Code 541. Whereas the oath prescribed for the commissioner of Grant County, uh, Marion, Indiana, is as follows. I, the undersigned, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Indiana, and that I will faithfully, impartially, and diligently discharge the duties of the office of county commissioner of this county according to the law and to the best of my ability. Okay? Now, you're going to understand this here in a little bit. What he's doing is offering, he's, he's entering into a contract, all right? But you need to accept their oath of office, accept and acknowledge their oath of office, okay? That contract it, it is not put in place to bind you. It's there to bind them. But if there's nobody on the other end of that contract to hold them accountable for breach of contract, breach of trust, then basically that oath isn't worth a broke dick. It's not worth the paper that it's written on, all right? So you got to do an acknowledgement and acceptance of these things, okay? And in this class... I'm going to teach you guys how to do an agricultural lien, which is a super top secret lien that supersedes all other liens, including your UCC1 uh, financing statements, okay, which aren't liens but notice of intent to lien, whereas the agricultural lien that I'm going to show you guys how to do, all that needs to be done is simple notice, notice, that's it, a simple notice to the commissioner of agriculture and uh, he, that, that information will trickle down to all other agents and agency, all right? And not only that, but anybody that impedes on your agricultural notice uh, or takes the property that is related to your agricultural notice, being your offspring, uh, and I'll show you how to do that and how it works. You have to understand USC 7 to make the agricultural lien work in your favor. Um, but anyway, somebody takes your property, you immediately serve notice of them on the agricultural lien and how much liability they carry, all right? And that agricultural lien can be astronomical, ladies and gentlemen. You can make that number whatever you wish it to be. A, violation of conflict of interest. The marriage license issued by the state is a legal proceeding and by due process requires nothing to be concealed to all parties involved of any legal consequences, whereas the state is required to inform all parties involved in writing or by audio or video and or verbally of the legal consequences as follows, but not limited to. 
When you enter into a marriage agreement, ladies and gentlemen, they never disclose this to you. They failed to disclose. You did not enter into a contract knowingly, willingly, and intentionally while they were concealing information from you. When you sign this contract, this marriage license, this is immediately what happens within the database, all right? Voluntary acknowledgement of paternity, high volumes automated uh, administrative systems. That's for the for tracking your phone and calling you uh, in the event that you separate from your spouse or spouse, all right? Proactive uh, matching federal parent locator service, okay? State uh, parent locator service, national directory of new hires, state directory of new hires, new hires reporting, multi-state financial institution data match, Uniform Interstate Family Support Act, wage withholding, liens on property, okay? The liens on property don't occur until after you've separated um, or this Title IV D scheme program has set its meat hooks in you. Then they start to execute all this stuff uh, because of this contract here, all right? You entered into a contract. The good news is the contract is void and ad initio for failure to disclose and concealing information. <clears throat> Offset uh, of um, unemployment compensation payments, reporting arrearages to credit agencies to prevent the undeserved extensions of credit, okay? So this is a Title 15, Subsection 1, Subpart 1, Interference with Trade and Commerce Violation. It comes at a $100 million fine, but you have to express yourself. There's a song about it out there that says, express yourself, you know? So anyway... Seizure and sales of personal or real property, seizures of state and federal income tax uh, refunds. This right here, number 14, typically happens when you become about three months behind in arrearages of an alleged debt due and owing. The reason I say it's an alleged debt is nobody's come to you with a true bill due and owing. By the way, I do not uh, advocate that you do not uh, support your offspring, your little ones, your friends, and your family. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying the government doesn't have a right to tell you how, what, when, where, and why to do something, period. It is never why they were fucking created in the first place, and they're operating as a business. They're 100% liable in their personal capacities, and that's what this class is going to be geared for, showing you guys how you can suit up with a pen and a piece of paper and fire off a couple nice pieces of paper to the state auditor, the governor, the attorney general, the, the uh, prosecuting attorney, um, the uh, Office of Child Support Enforcement, the head of DHHS that's in charge of the Office of Child Support, uh, Child Protective Services, excuse me, um, and enforcement, okay? Seizure of state and federal income tax uh, refunds without due process of law, revocation of uh, various types of licenses, driver's license, business license, occupational license, recreational license, pilot's license, CDLs, you name it. The second that you get involved in, whoa, the second you get involved in this shenanigans, uh, all this stuff uh, is almost retroactive, right? Um, attachment of lottery winnings and insurance settlements of debt parents requirements uh, that uh, recipients of financial assistance from the Small Business Administration, including direct loans and loans guarantees, must certify that the recipient is not more than 60 days delinquent in the payment of child support, okay? So in, in child support, if you're more than 60 days delinquent, you can't get a loan to go to school. How are you ever expected to excel and ascend to the mind and excel uh, financially, uh, creating your own business or whatever, uh, educating yourself to a degree where you can get a higher paying job if you can't get a loan guarantee, all right? 18, authority to seize assets held by public or private retirement funds and financial institutions, ladies and gentlemen, to talk about leaving you destitute, all right? Hey, it gets better. I mean, when you guys take this class, I'm really going to show you how this works, full circle from from the cradle to the prison, all right? From the cradle to the prison is what it should be called, all right? Because that's what it is. And even the prisons, the wardens, the guards, they're all getting paid by the state. It's all incentivized by the federal government to ensnare and entrap its own people, all right? The people on your board of directors in your county are fully aware of this shit. They're participating in it. They do not give a shit uh, about you. They don't give a shit about your rights. They don't care. So let's liquidate their bond. Let's get rid of them and get some people in there that do give a fuck, that don't want to lose the assets that they've acquired and accumulated in their life 
by violating another man's rights, all for the greater good of their principal corporation, right? Or subsidiary corporation or municipality, right? That's where we're at, ladies and gentlemen. That's what this class is going to be geared for. This is where I got started being deeply involved in studying the law, ladies and gentlemen. And this is where I prevailed for my first time, going against five different judges, a number of different fucking prosecutors, all, all to have them finally leave me the fuck alone, all right? But this is the type of paperwork I put together for it. Deprivation of a debtor to, to a fresh start to discharge a debt completely. That's something they don't tell you about. Child support debt is not dischargeable. Why? Because it's not verifiable. There is no contract, ladies and gentlemen. There was no bill of exchange, bills or goods or services exchange. It's a Rico racketeering fucking scheme, ladies and gentlemen. All right? Pay a percentage of the debt or pay the full amount of the debt over a longer period of time because debts for child support and alimony are not dischargeable. Again, they're not dischargeable because they're not verifiable. Okay? Only verifiable debts are dischargeable. Remember that. 20. State or federal imprisonment, fines, or both. All right? They're going to take your life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, flush it down the toilet over fake fiat that you allegedly owe when they carry the primary active degree of fault to pay all debts and settle all matters. Yeah, how's that make you feel? All right? B. Due process of law. Pursuant to Public Law 10366, uh, the Omnibus Reconciliation Act of 1933, uh, 1993, CSEA, must afford due process safeguards. And Title 45 CFR 303.101C2, the due process rights of the parties involved must be protected. And Section 466, Title, 4, uh, Title 42 USC uh, 666A, 3A, and that is not a typo. This is what Billy Clinton was a part of right there. No bullshit. Uh, CSEA must be in full compliance with all procedural due process requirements. Two, pursuant, uh, pursuant to Section uh, 466, Title 42, USC 666A5CI, Procedural due process requirements, procedures for a simple civil process for voluntarily acknowledgement paternity under which the state must provide that before a man or a woman can sign an acknowledgement of paternity, they must be given notice orally or through the use of video or audio equipment. When did that happen for you? Did that happen for you? Because if it didn't, that's a denial of due process of law. The, the, the presumed and assumed contract is void in ab initio, okay? And in writing. They must do it both. Provide it in writing and give it to you video and orally, all right? C, Title 45 CFR 302.34, Title 4D and E contracts, Contractor refers to the governmental entity with whom the CSEA enters into a Title IV-D and Title IV-E contract. Governmental entity includes the following entities in the same uh, county as the CSEA. It does not take a rocket scientist to see the clear conflict of interest. Who has interest in receiving federal funds through the contracts? A court, a prosecutor, or other law enforcement officials, such as your sheriff, they're all in, they're all involved in it. Okay, a sheriff, a clerk, a clerk of the court, a recorder's office, a treasurer's office, the governor, the county commissioners, the attorney general, the secretary of state, the state treasury, or any other public or governmental agency or official. All right, I can prove how even the janitor at the high school benefits from this program, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, because all these funds go to benefit the state treasury. I can prove how these guys here incentivize are incentivized by this program through incentive payments, and they'll be happy to send you to jail because even the prison guards and the wardens are getting a kickback out of this deal. All right. You want to talk about involuntary servitude, peonage, bondage, you name it, with implied, pre presumed, and assumed contracts that don't exist? All right? I'm going I'm to show you it. And I'm also going to show you how to bring your claim against the surety company. And make this all go away for yourself. Set that number nice and high. 
and sit, kick your heels up, and just wait for them to come make you the offer and cut you the check. Title 31 USC 6305 Cooperative Agreements. This is the contract between the state and federal office of child support that only benefits the United States Federal Corporation, Title 28, 3215A. A typo and I got to correct that. Bink. The department may enter into a cooperative agreement with the public entities in accordance with Title 45 CFR 302.34 and contracts with private entities for the purpose of carrying out the responsibilities granted to the division of OCSS, Office Child Support Services, as the Title 4D and Title 4E agency. Again, Title 4E deals with the incentivized payments for adoption. They're getting more money, if not, if not, if they're not getting equal money or equal value uh, for through the child support program because they're getting like sixty six cents per dollar that they order to pay. They're getting, if not the equivalent, way more than that in the Title Four E program, where the, through the adoption program. Okay, that's why they're so quick anymore to whisk away your rights and take your offspring, especially the blonde haired, blue eyed, uh, light skinned kids. They're, they'll sell them in a New York minute, all right? It's a big money industry. An executive agency shall use a cooperative agreement as the legal instrument reflecting relations uh, relationships between the United States government and a state, a local government, or a recipient when the principal purpose of the relationship is to transfer a thing of value, a thing of value, okay? Not a man, not a woman not your offspring, a thing of value to the state, local government, or other recipient to carry out a public government purpose of support or stimulation authorized by a law of the United States Federal Corporation instead of acquiring by purchase, lease, or barter. Okay, so the federal government isn't purchasing, they're not leasing, they're not bartering, they're, they're simply engaged in a RICO racketeering scheme to steal your loved ones from you. And this doesn't just apply to to uh, the, the youth. It also applies to our elders. They're doing it all the time, putting our elders in nursing homes, liquidating their estates, whisking off uh, what they had saved in their life so they can't give it to their, their families, friends, or whatever. And they're making sure uh, that the heirs of the inheritance of the father are not received, all right? property or services for the direct benefit of the use of the United States government, and two, substantial involvements is expected between the executive agencies and the state, local government, or other recipients when carrying out the activity contemplated in the agreement. E, Title 42, 654-3, which is a single and separate entity identified as Title 4D, uh, child support, and Title 4E, now goes into a cooperative agreement under Title 45 CFR 302.34 with the counties for the benefit of the state treasury. The state plan will provide that the state will enter into an agreement, which are reflected in a record for cooperative agreements under Title 45 CFR 303.107 of this chapter with appropriate courts. Okay, These aren't courts, ladies and gentlemen. These are administrative proceedings. They are single and separate from the United States courts, ladies and gentlemen. The the family court is not a court at all. It's a business meeting, all right? And they're violating the separation of powers clause because they're taking what purports to be an alleged judge and moving that judge, him or her, over into a private venue. They've revenued that courtroom, and it's they're nothing more than administrators, all right? But if you don't know that and uh, you get rowdy with them in a court, uh, contempt of court, and they'll cast you into jail for 30 days. You don't have contempt power in a family fucking court, you moron. I don't know who the fuck blew smoke up your ass that led you to believe you have the authority to cast me into a fucking cage because I don't agree with you. I don't like you, and I'm not entering into a contract with you lying, looting, pandering pieces of shit. You're off your fucking rocker. Attorneys and prosecutors, uh, correctional officials, and Indi, uh, Indian tribes or tribal organizations, such arrangements may be entered into with, this, with single official covering more than one court. Officials or agencies, if this uh, single official has the legal authority to enter into an agreement on behalf of the courts, officials, or agencies, such arrangements shall contain provisions for providing court 
uh, courts and law enforcement officials with pertinent information needed in locating non-custodial parents. Okay, these are the contracts when you signed the marriage license or did the paternity test that were blind adhesion contracts that you were unaware of that weren't disclosed to you about uh, giving your private intellectual property your information to other agencies. And they didn't just give it to them, they sold it to them for a profit and never gave you a piece of the pie, okay? Establishing paternity and securing support to the extent that such information is relevant to the duties to be performed pursuant to the agreement. They shall also provide for assistance of the Title IV D and Title IV E agency in carrying out the program. Okay, this is the contract that your sheriff's department is entering into. So he's no longer acting as a sheriff. Instead, he is uh, acting as uh, on behalf of a principal corporation, and thus he loses his immunity or she loses her immunity when they're doing a process of service for the Title IV D and Title IV E program. They are doing it because they have entered into a contract for federal funding and may relate to any other matters of the common concern. Under matters of the common concern, such arrangements may include provisions for the investigation and prosecution of fraud directly related to paternity and child and spousal support and provisions to reimburse courts and law enforcement officials for their assistance. See, they're getting assistance that they're getting reimbursed plus incentivized for their voluntary uh, assistance for participating in it. They are hiding the Title IV D and E program under the executive branch utilizing the Social Security Act. Separation of powers clearly states the legislative, judicial, and executive branch shall forever remain separate and no person from one branch shall exercise the duties of another. Granted, this is a federal law. Nevertheless, it is a law all judges are bound to, uh, bound to abide by. The administrative child support and adoption process created by Indiana or, uh, or any other state violates the separation of powers doctrine by infringing on the direct courts, uh, excuse me, infringing on the district court's original jurisdiction by creating the tribunal, which is not inferior to the district court, and by permitting child support officers to participate in, uh, in the unauthorized practice of law. Therefore, the statute is unconstitutional. State of Minnesota and Supreme Court continue of F, continuation of F. <clears throat> the executive branch is now in a uh, contractual arrangement with the courts to provide assistance and the executive branch gets reimbursed for it. The executive branch is double dipping, i.e. committing fraud and or looting federal funding. Federal funding for the Title IV D and Title IV E, single and separate entity hidden in the executive branch, contracted with the uh, with the state for incentivized grants paid to the uh, state treasury. The state treasury pays all state employees pensions and salaries, including but not limited to judges, prosecuting attorneys, sheriffs, clerks of the court, governors, attorney general, secretary of state, commissioners, treasurers, teachers, school board directors, state auditors, prison guards, wardens, jails, uh, jailers, probation officers, prosecuting attorneys, district attorneys, and the list continues to go on. One can uh, clearly, and all the way down to the, the local high school janitor, ladies and gentlemen, the, light, the local high school janitor is being paid by the state, and he is benefiting from this program. The judge cannot say that they're impartial and, and have no interest in it because their offspring and husbands benefit from this, okay? Because it, the funds go to the state treasury, all right? And she's being paid by who? The state treasury. Okay, it's conflict of interest, which is unjustly enriching herself by violating the Separation of Powers Act, right? So she's in violation of her oath of office, or he's in violation of his oath of office, isn't he? All right, very simple. <clears throat> if we keep this shit simple, bringing your claim against their uh, surety bond shall be, should be very, very easy, all right? One can clearly see there is a uh, is plenty of incentive to violate a man's uh, a man of his rights to his privacy and his family. Title IV D and uh, Title IV E is a two hundred billion dollar a year industry joint commercial venture, and each state gets its piece of the pie in federal funding by volunteering to participate in the Title IV D and E scheme. Now, see, they couldn't mandatorily the federal government couldn't mandate that. Uh, that the states participate in their 
scheme. This is no bullshit. This is really what they call it. Rather, they had to get them to volunteer to break the law. They had to voluntarily agree to be part of this program, okay? So they're volunteering on one end, and at the same token, they're doing business. And when the government does business, it demotes itself to the status of a mere corporation and can sue and be sued, all right? Deprivation of rights under the color of law. This list is limited. I can go on for months on rights violated under under the color of law. All right. What acts void legislative acts in violation of the Indiana Constitution or the Constitution of the United States are void, and the judiciary shall so declare them. No man shall be denied equal protection of the laws. The provisions interfere with the injury uh, injured party's inherent rights to raise his offspring without unnecessary government in- interference and infringement, Meyer versus Nebraska. License suspension, corporate uh, uh, corporate license suspended, recreational license suspended, occupational license dis- suspended, driver's license suspended, all without due process of law, okay, which is also a Title 15, subsection 1, subpart 1 violation, interference with trade and commerce, all right, under an artificial... Artifice in a scheme. Involuntary servitude. Violation of due process of law. Denial of uh, right to counsel. Denial of freedom. Denial of liberty. Denial of the Fifth Amendment. Denial of the Sixth Amendment. Denial of the uh, right to my offspring. Theft under the color of authority. Two or more agents conspiring against rights. Denial of the Fourth Amendment. Denial of the First Amendment. Peonage. Human trafficking. Trafficking of children. False imprisonment. Assault and battery. Kidnapping. Extortion. Simulated legal processes. Bondage, wage garnishment, interference with trade and commerce, uh, mail fraud, trafficking of persons, identity theft. And I can just keep going on and on and on and on and on, but you get the drift, all right? <clears throat> so, with that said, uh, here in about three weeks, I'm going to hold a class on this. And I'm going to rip through this for you guys. And I'm going to include this documentation. I'm not even close to done with it. Like I said, I think this is page five, and I've got like 20 or so pages. And it just goes. <clears throat> On and on and on and on and on and on and on. All right? So, um, with that said, I'm going to let you guys go. I want to give you that little brief bit of information so you can go do your own studying on uh, what I'm talking about and decide whether or not you want to join the class. Um, I think it would be most beneficial for everybody, and I don't care what you're studying. If you're studying uh, the UCC, if you're studying the USC, if you're studying financial, if you're studying um, uh, criminal law, Uh, If you're studying the law of merchant, this class will be beneficial for you. It may help you uh, learn how to study, first and foremost. That's important, how to to track things down and find information for yourself. Uh, But this is what got me started studying law uh, adamantly. And as I started uh, breaking into this, I realized, well, if they're engaged in this shit right here, and it's clearly against the law, unlawful and illegal, then what else are they doing? And as I started to peel back the veil, I started to see the whole thing is a constructive fraud hell-bent on destroying the American way of life, all while fleecing and extorting you and taxing you into an oblivion so you can't even survive, all right? Because they need you to want them, all right? They need you to need them. And so they create the problem so they can provide the solution. I want to provide you a solution that gives you an opportunity to grab your sack of nuts and stand up and give them the old crazy-eyed look and say, motherfuckers, get your checkbooks out. Get your checkbooks out. Get your 433As filled out and your 433Bs because I'm going to liquidate everything you thought you fucking owned. You piece of shit, tyrannical motherfuckers. All right? You human trafficking, lying, looting, pandering assholes. Because that's the truth of it. That's the reality. There is no way... No way that these people who are going to law school, who are administrators and alleged judges, there is no way in hell they don't know this shit. All right? I dropped out of school at 13 years old. It didn't take me long to figure out they were pissing on my back, trying to convince me it was fucking raining, because that's the American way, kid. God bless America. Now, we're honorable judges, and these lawyers are honorable men of an honorable society in the legal legal field and uh, you just need to run along kid and take your ass kicking like you got it and understand that you need to pay Uncle Sam a little bit more than you've been paying him alright that's the truth of it you gotta get over all this shit 
and start learning how to defend yourself. And it's not with guns and bullets and knives and, and uh, anything of that nature. It's literally with the knowledge ascertained or acquired through books that you can enforce. And I'm not talking about bringing a lawsuit against them in a federal court. I'm talking about bringing an action against their bond, like a car collision. Real simple. Here's the facts. I reported on a police report. Here you go. These are. This is my statement of facts under the pains and penalties of perjury. This is what I said happened. Okay. Now, insurance company, run along with your high-priced lawyers and figure out how much liability this agent and agency carries for being a jackass. All right? And come back to me with a nice check full of zeros, because that's what I want to see. A one with a bunch of zeros behind it. Anyway, class will be coming up here in three weeks. Uh, I'll get you guys a date on Facebook. Pay attention to my Facebook. Uh, I'll post it underneath this video or on top of this video at some point when I figure out exactly when I'm going to do it. Um, but we're not only just doing this document here. And you guys will get all these documents, too. Uh, I've just got an array of them up here. We got uh, the Freedom of Information Act. Um, something that we're going to talk about is when you're involved in a court case, um, getting... Uh, uh, more definite statements from the people that are making the accusations. Uh, so many people fail because they don't get more definite statements. Uh, the, the statements that are made by these actors, these rogue agents, are, are, are oftentimes vague and ambiguous. And nobody asks for a more definite statement or to depose them, okay, under the pains and penalties of perjury. You realize when you're deposing somebody, you can ask them what position they enjoy having uh, intercourse in. And they got to tell you. Right? You could just be an absolute asshole about it. You can get into every intimate facet of their life, uh, what businesses they're invested in. You would be surprised how many of these judges are invested in the adoption programs, okay, that have safe houses that they own, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, uh, rehabilitation centers that they own, which is a conflict of interest, okay? And you go there, they go, ah, you need to do uh, 18 days at the uh, General Reed over there. Well, what's General Reed? Oh, it's a mental health facility. Oh, really? You're going to send me to a mental health facility on what grounds? Where, where's the MD in front of your fucking name, you jack wagon? Well, uh, 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 do you have a financial interest in that business? Well, no, of course not. I don't want to talk about this. Never mind. Kick him out of the court. Why? Because they own the son of a bitch. They're getting federal funding for these programs, and they're buying into them, all right? And anyway... Class will be coming up in three weeks. I'm going to show you guys how this works. Um, helped a lot of people out with this. And pretty much what you need to know is within this section, I mean, for the most part, there's some other bits and pieces, but uh, these are all the people that benefit from participating in that RICO racketeering scheme. Okay? And make no mistake about it. It is definitely a RICO racketeering scheme. So thanks for joining me. I'll see you guys in about three weeks. Of course, I'll be doing videos off and on, but I will be putting this together. You will get all the documents. As always, class will only be $100. Um, I'll get the information put together over the next day or two and put it on this video.